Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to show you really quick how I went from uh, these files, so these six uh, files from the James Webb Space Telescope, to get a final result that looks like this. So my Pixin site is about to crash. Uh, I have like a bunch of error messages here because of how messy my uh, my project is right now. So before it crashes, uh, I wanted to to go through how I went, uh, you know, which workflow I followed in order to get this final result, because it's very tricky. Processing data from NASA is really different than processing data from your home telescope. So the way I did it was, first of all, if you don't know how to download the data from NASA, uh, make sure you go through the tutorial uh, video and post I made earlier uh, about this subject, and then you will learn how to download these files, for example, or whatever file you want from both Hubble and James Webb. So, when you download the files, you have a bunch of um, a bunch of different files, and what you want to keep is uh, the masters. So you go to the L3 folder, and in there you will find six masters, and those masters have names with a a filter name as well. So here, for example, each of these are from different filters. We have F090W, we have F200W, we have F470N. So there, is, there are several uh, filters used uh, in the telescope, and right here we have six masters. So they're all different, um, you know, it's not like obvious as to what each is, since this is like infrared stuff, so it's not really like narrowband or NRGB. So the first annoying thing with those files is that they're not the same dimension. So the first thing you'll have to do is go to process and go to star alignment. And in there, uh, where is it? Star alignment. And in there, you have to uh, add all your, your, your masters here. So um, we have six of them. So add your masters in there. And then you will want to uh, add a reference image and st star align all of these masters. Um, if you have issues star aligning, try to play with the star detection settings here. One common error message you might get is like, oh, I cannot compute uh, the stars, so they cannot really find stars. Uh, so if that's the case for you, um, try to play with the node reduction here, like one or two, and see how that goes. And then if you still have the same issue, uh, try playing with the settings here until it works. So I've already done this uh, earlier. I can't actually launch anything right now because it will crash for sure. Um, so once you have all these files aligned, the next thing you want to do is go to dynamic crop. And you'll want to crop each image so that you don't have any more black bands. And once you, you do this on one image, don't apply it yet. Uh, drag this little triangle here to each other image first, so that they, they crop the exact same way as your, your main image here. And once you have done this for the five other ones, then click on the green check mark to apply it on the, this last one. So now our images are all the same size and the same dimension with the same crop. And now we can uh, work on them properly. So uh, once this was ready, we were ready to combine them. So I didn't do really any noise reduction. I didn't do any um, background extraction because the files are so clean. It's extremely clean. Uh, the background is so nice. There is no noise, nothing. So here what I did next was I directly went into pixel math. And here you want to uh, combine those six files into one color image. So it's pretty tricky because usually you only have like, you know, three files to work with and it's very simple. Uh, but here we have six of them. So we have to find the sweet spot to combine them and have, the, you know, have natural colors. So my friend Patrick helped me with this and he, he gave me a good idea. So what I did to, to kind of know which filters to put you know, in R, or G or B, I looked at the filter names, and if you find the, the filter wheel from the James Webb Telescope, you will find a wavelength coverage uh, chart here. So see how many filters there is? Um, so here, if we open up the filter chart here, you can see a bunch of filter names with the, uh, with the color associated with what NASA most likely used for the combination for their own images. So here, um, what I did, I went back and forth between those two windows and I went filter by filter. So here, I'm going to make them all small again so we can see better. 
So here I, I put all filters like gradually, so from the smallest to the, to the biggest number. And so I went through them one by one. So for example here, F090, I looked for F090W, and it's right here, and it's kind of purple. So purple, and here if you go online and look for like a color tool, for example, like this one here, uh, if you go down uh, on this one in particular, you have sliders for RGB. So I'm looking for purple. So if we, I think purple is like red and blue. So we'll do zero green, half red, half blue, and we have some purple here. Um, depending on how much you want to, to play with this, you can do like 0 0.5 so to keep it simple, like half and half, or you can go crazy and do like 0 0.3 and 0 0.7. On pixel math. So here I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to do half and half, which is still purple. So here for F090W, I went uh, into R and blue, not in G, R and blue, and I inputted F090W times 0 0.5 and the other half in the blue one, as you can see here. I did the same thing for each filter, for example, 187N. Uh, 187N would be somewhere around here, so kind of blue cyan, oh, right here. Uh, blue turquoise, blue cyan. And for that, if you go back to the colors rule once again, you do blue, and I think it's blue and green. See, it gives you a, a bluish cyan. So, I did the same thing in blue and green. So it's very simple. The only ones that didn't really have to um, be like half and half were F335, which is, as you will see here, green. And I just put like plain green. So like everything in green. And then the rest was I think in R, yeah, F444 and F470, which is all red, as you can see here. F444 and F70 is like pure red. So I didn't bother with uh, half and half here. And as you can see, we now have a full uh, pixel math ready and you will want to open up a random file just so it, you know, oh, I can't apply anything. And ju just um, apply this on a one of the files. And once this is done, you will get a combined result, which I still have over here. And this is the image I got right after combining, stop, right after combining um, the six files together. So as you can see, it's like a, a nice, um, nice image full of green, but it's stretched, so and then the next thing I did was to stretch this permanently into a non-linear image. And for this, I simply use the STF because as you can see here, it's very beautiful already. I don't care about the colors just yet, so it's really pretty. So all you have to do is just to open up the histogram transformation and slide the STF in there. Uh, I'm going to break my abyss inside here. So you slide it in there and you reset that one and you apply the histogram so it's going to be fully stretched and after i did this i um directly went ahead and opened up standard 2 and i uh, removed the stars from this so we had a star mask which i have right here as you can see and we had a starless image so i don't really have the starless version here uh, unprocessed but i do have the final starless image here so what I did to achieve this, these colors um, to go from you know, the green to this is I made color masks. So if you go to utility, uh, script, utilities, go down to color mask, and I made all six masks for, for this. So you, you just select whichever color you want, and then I usually go to mask blur and we move like three or four layers here, and then just OK. And this, you know, do it for each color and will give you um, six masks, one for each color. And you can then apply these masks individually. And um, like for example, if I apply this mask right now, I would only walk on the colors within those white areas. So that's very simple to use because um, once you apply you know, one mask, you can then open curves transformation and you can play with the color curves in there to achieve whichever color you want. So you have an unlimited amount of colors you can you can select here with uh, with the curves and the masks. So I did this for like a good half hour with all the masks and got the, those colors. I like the blue in the background. I like the yellow in the front. And um, yeah, I was really satisfied with those colors. After that, I only did a few things left. I did uh, local histogram equalization. This I only did to 
kind of improve the details a bit more. So be careful with this because it's very strong. So make sure the amount you select is not too much or else you will have some disgusting results. But I, I picked a low amount and um, just to reveal some more details in there. And uh, lastly, what I did was I, um, yeah, I think that was it. I just added the, the stars back into it. So to add the stars, you go back to pixel math uh, and you reset everything. You make sure that your star mask is stretched as well. So do the same thing, either STF and Instagram, or you can simply uh, open up the histogram only and play with the sliders until you have uh, some nice stars and then apply it. Now we have a stretched star mask. Uh, non-linear and so once that's done I just went to use a single RGBK expression and typed the name of my star mask plus the name of my uh, main starless image and all you have to do next is to apply it oh, I'm going to first to create the image and once you do that you will have your final result uh, with the, which is the oh, which is the um, the tallest image with the stars. And the th so yeah, I think it's pretty. The very last thing I did before I exported though was, as you can see those stars, they have like a black dot in them. And so what I did is I did process, all processes and clone stamp. You can also do this easier in Photoshop if you want to, or Lightroom, it's much easier that way. But if you want to stay within PixInsight, you can do it here. And then reduce of, I think it was Maybe 10, it depends, depends on the star. Uh, and then you select a... a oh, I can't do it right here because it's, it's kind of broken. So you select a, a point within the stars and then you can kind of fix the, the ringing within the stars very simply. So of course you have to take your time with this because it's not like... It's not very fast to do, and there's like a bunch of stars, but if you take your time, then you should be able to uh, to fix all these weird black dots in your stars. So yeah, this is how I uh, processed this image. I'm really happy with it, it's really nice. I want it to be kind of different from the actual NASA picture, so I went with a bit of a crazy uh, color palette here with like a bright yellow and a bright blue, but I think I like it, so... Yeah, uh, this was fun and hopefully, uh, I mean, the only the, the only main annoying part was at the very beginning when you have to crop each filter and then combine them. But besides that, everything else is pretty straightforward. If you guys want to follow a much more in-depth uh, workflow for PixInsight, uh, you can find it below. But yeah, hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. And uh, I'll see you next time in class, guys.